Hey folks, got a comment, uh, really a challenge in a um, uh, video that I sent out a couple weeks ago, I posted, and it was, you know, to say, hey, how about uh, detailing, Joe, what it was like emotionally uh, to go to your first day of retirement, your first week, first month, first year, uh, what kind of emotional and physical changes did you go through leading up to retirement and then post-retirement? And, uh, you know, I'm actually uh, surprised I haven't made a video on this already um, because I've actually, I'm, I'm looking at a journal that I kept for the first two years. Every month I would write down what I'm thinking because I was getting so many questions about retirement and I wanted to help people on their path and say, hey, here's what's going on for me. Here's what I was thinking about. Here's the moves I made. And whenever anybody says they're thinking about retirement, I just send them this nine page document. <laughs> so uh, all about making my life easier. So um, exciting. Hopefully this this uh, helps some of you out. And um, if nothing else, uh, to let you know that quite often I'll turn a question that you may have through an email or a, just a comment on YouTube or on LinkedIn. I'll turn it into a video and, you know, some people get a kick out of that, you know, that old Joe made some video uh, out of that. So, hey, let's get going here. So, uh, you know, first of all, for me, I had the choice of going lump sum or to get a pension, you know, from the company that I worked for for 32 years. And I chose lump sum. I, you know, this is not a financial video, but uh, I chose lump sum just because I didn't want to have all my eggs in one basket. You know, companies can go bankrupt and and some of the pension is covered by the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. But the younger you are, remember I retired at 54, the less and less you get. So I, I chose to go lump sum and, you know, three years in, that proved to be brilliant. But <laughs> a little bit of luck involved in that. So uh, that was one of the major things that was going on for me a couple months before retirement. It's nice to have a monthly check coming in. You feel good about that. You feel like there's no risk to that. But folks, there's a lot of risk to that. <laughs> All your eggs are in one company. They go bankrupt. It's, and most of companies are uh, guaranteed their pensions through the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. But uh, don't assume it's 100% because it's not. Um, I think mine was 20, it was either 22 or 27 percent. Uh, I can't remember exactly which one, but it was a no-brainer once I figured that out. Uh, you know, retiree medical is a big deal, and uh, my company did pay uh, retiree medical for a couple more, couple years into retirement, but I, I got a separate video on that. I ended up going with Indiana Farm Bureau, was ended up being half the cost of my company's pensions, uh, our company's uh, retiree medical. So, uh, Look out there. Uh, there are great options out there. MediShare plans are very cheap. There are some short-term plans out there that are cheap. Again, I got a video on all that, but getting comfortable with your medical is a big deal as you're stepping in, as you're two months away, one month away. You know, and then, you know, the big question comes up, do I want a financial advisor? Do I want to go on this journey alone or do I want a professional? And as, as you know, if you've uh, listened to this uh, uh, channel, um, I chose to go with advisor, but I actually don't pay him any fees. He gets paid out of the expense ratio of the funds that I um, uh, invest in. And those are American funds, which do very well um, compared to indexes. That's a whole other video that I made and uh, got a lot of attention for. But uh, American funds, so, uh, you know, They've done well, they've done well, I'll just say that. So I did go with an advisor that I do not pay for, pay attention to fees. You know, there it's a very big deal. And, and actually when I was choosing an advisor, I actually got a fairly young advisor. I believe he's, seven, he's 37 years old now. I wanted somebody that would be with me on the whole 30 year journey, not somebody that may know more things, but they, you know, maybe 65 years old or 60 years old and they're, you know, they're, they're kind of turning into a part-time person. I wanted somebody that was a little bit hungry, somebody that paid attention to me, uh, and somebody, in case something happened to me, uh, could pick up the ball for my wife, who's not near into the financial piece of retirement as I am, somebody that could pick up the ball and say, this is what Joe would have done. So that, that was my thinking around uh, going with an advisor. Watch your fees, folks. Um, you know, uh, let's see, I'm going bouncing down here on my... Uh, Let's see. Hey, as you know, again, this isn't all going to be repeat, but the first part is because uh, I've left videos on it. I use the bucket approach. Uh, 
I have money I need now in very secure investments, you know, uh, savings, savings accounts. I have bucket two money, which is money that I need in four to uh, seven years, four to seven years. Those tend to be in um, uh, uh, dividend paying stocks. And then I've got long-term stuff that I need after year seven, say eight and on, uh, is in long-term growth, you know, a little more uh, riskier stocks that I can have go up and down. And, and uh, but over time they, they pay off bigger. So I have three buckets that I'm managing. Don't think, some of you think that, say that's, that's difficult. You know, I haven't made a freaking change in three years. It's just, it's every six months I do a deep dive into where my buckets are and decide if I can move any money. Uh, right now, I can't move anything out of my bucket three because it's I'm not 59 and a half yet. Uh, I can't do it without penalty. So um, it, if you think that's stressful, yeah, you know, you're overthinking it. Um, you know, the key, one of the keys, and I'm just reading here, okay? One of the keys to retirement I've learned, you know, my focus was all around investments and investment performance, but equally, if not more important than that, is controlling your expenses. Because, you, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you make, you can you can outspend it. So knowing your expenses, monitoring your expenses, I don't do that every week. I don't do it every month. Every six months, I dive in and say, how have we been doing over this period of time? Because sometimes there's a new refrigerator, there's a new floor, there's a vacation. And then you want to say, let's even all that out. How are we spending over the last six months? Any adjustments I need to make? And, uh, you know, that's all been fun. And I'm spending less. I'm spending less. Uh, I think right now I'm spending about 80% of what my planned retirement budget was. So this is not 80% of my pre-retirement income. This was going in and budgeting line by line and saying, this is what my retirement expenses are going to be. I'm about 80% of that uh, three years in. You know, decide this is all pre-retirement. Okay. Well, I guess that was after retirement. But, um, you know, deciding to retire is, is scary. This is, you know, coming up to the final days of, of pulling the trigger. You know, even if the math works out, it's scary because you've, you've been learning your whole career. You've been investing and saving your whole career. You've been working, being, bringing in an income. Hey, if the market goes down 50%, you're still working. Your dollar cost averaging, that's actually a good thing to have the market go down because all stocks are on sale. But you, it's it's natural to think the worst, you know, and what could go wrong, and what if we have a 1929 again, and am I prepared for 10, 12, 15 years, and, you know, on all those fears, um, it's a big deal. So, um, hey, then, you know, I retired, okay? And, and I'm telling you, the day after retirement feels like vacation. It, it really did not feel any, diff, any sizable difference between that and vacation. It didn't really feel like I was never coming back. It felt like I, you know, you're you're still heavily engaged in work and care about what's going on, care a lot about the people. You want the the handoff to be great to the to the next generation coming after you. But um, honestly, it just felt like I was on vacation, uh, not not retired, you know. And uh, you know, then coming about a month after um, retiring, zero regret regrets. I never regretted retiring for one minute of one day in three years. Not one second. Uh, I found myself laughing, you know, you know, just like now. And every, every time I bring up retirement, I just laugh and say, oh my gosh, it's great. The, the controlling of your own time, you know, saying no to different things, not having a boss, not having deadlines, not having the stress of other people's performance. Um, you know, uh, it's great. You know, no regrets about retiring. I didn't retire too early, didn't retire too late. Uh, 54, uh, as a reminder, was was my age. Um, you know, great. You know, the plant I was at, you know, I'm looking back on it and comparing myself to other people that have retired. The plant I was at was very demanding. You know, it was it was the big leagues. You know, uh, it was uh, a lot of activity, a lot of money, a lot of winning, and a lot of losing. Uh, whether it be safety-wise, environmental, or performance-wise, very complex, highly engineered product, very demanding customers, very fast pace, and I—it's all I, you know, it was, it was my first adult job at age 22. I worked at uh, for this large aluminum producer, and it's all I really knew. But then I didn't realize how demanding my job had been until I started comparing myself to others that 
hey, they work 40 hours a week and didn't worry about work on the weekends, holidays, or vacations. And, you know, I, I was working every day of the year uh, for 32 years. Uh, worked Christmas Day, worked New Year's Day, you know, maybe an hour here, maybe a half an hour, maybe a couple phone calls, but it was just, it was in the game all the time, 365. I enjoyed it. Uh, we do it ex exactly the same way, but, um, you know, after 32 years in that environment, it was time, time to move on. So I didn't realize how much stretch, uh, stress I had in my life till about two months after I retired and saying, Hey, uh, I handle stress extremely well, but I didn't even realize that I was carrying around this 10 pound weight with me, even on my days off. Um, so that may be a little bit of a surprise to some of you that uh, you're under more stress than you think. You got deadlines, you got meetings you got to be on, you got to get up, and be at a certain place on time, you got performance expectations. Believe me, you're under stress if you're if you're working for somebody else. You know, another thing that's you know about the two month period is you know you're going to I became more conservative with my investments. You know, it's easy to be cocky and confident and go all in on growth you know, stocks and buy all individual stocks and talk and trash when you're working. When you're not working and you need that nest egg to last uh, 30, 35, 40 years, uh, you're going to be a little more conservative, uh, investing in more blue chip, you know, dividend kind of stocks. Uh, just that, that pressure is there. The bucket approach helped me uh, balance that. In the sense, you know, mentally, being mentally aware that, hey, I can handle a four-month dip like nothing, you know, because of bucket one. I can handle a seven-year dip, you know, with some pain, but I got some fairly conservative dividend-paying stocks that are better in that year's uh, four to seven. Uh, gets over seven, you know, I'll have to dip, dip, dip into my long-term stuff, maybe sell some stocks at a low, but that's a pretty catastrophic dip. Uh, that's lasting over seven years. Makes sense. That bucket approach really mentally allows you to uh, sleep at night and uh, make while making your money last. You're not going to make the maximum amount of money doing that, but you're going to have a much lower stress retirement, which isn't that what retirement's about. It's about enjoying life, low stress, traveling, hobbies, part-time work in a passion area. Uh, you don't want to be stressing and wringing your fingers and going back to work, right? <laughs> um, let's say I continue to be a YouTube junkie. I love learning. I went once I retired. Uh, I well working. I worked in life. I was always looking at leadership. Always trying to model myself after other leaders. Understand their better management techniques. Of just kind of pushing myself. You know, uh, of understanding lean, understanding reliability, best practices. I just morph that into learning more about financial investments, uh, a lot about coaching, a lot about, you know, right now I'm studying the Lewis and Clark expedition, you know, and then studying our founding fathers and in, in, in a study group I've got, you know, uh, I'm just a, a, a study junkie. Uh, one of the things that uh, I've left in other videos is I I'm watching probably a third, one third of the television that I watched when I was working. And to me, I attribute that to, I've got more energy and, uh, uh, you know, I'm not just coming home and sitting on the couch after a hard day's work and collapsing and saying, Ugh, entertain me. You know, um, I'm a more um, a learning junkie, okay, if that makes sense to you. Um, folks out there on investments, uh, and, you know, it's just, again, two months in, there's so many fear mongers out there just playing on your fears. This can happen. This can happen. Oh my gosh. You know, you better sign on with this investor. You better invest in, in uh, annuities because this can happen. Playing on your fears the whole time. I mean, this this is a YouTube technique with thumbnails. Uh, the end is coming. This, you know, if a thousand people predict a stock market crash, you know, five of them are going to be right. You know, if you predict it every day, uh, somebody's going to eventually be right. And they're going to say, hey, Joe, Joe, he predicted this crash. And he, so he's predicting the next one. Uh, you know, don't believe it, guys. Don't believe it. You don't know uh, that a crash is coming. Just stay in investment, investing for long term. When you buy the farm, keep the farm, you know, right? Uh, life insurance. This was actually a little traumatic for me. Um, I canceled my life insurance, you know, and I've had life insurance. I've had four kids grow up through the house, you know, and you've always had life insurance protecting if something happened to uh, the breadwinner and canceled my life insurance, took a couple people in my finance, my financial group that I uh, was uh, one of the pioneer starters of that, uh, originators rather, 
um, cancel my life insurance. They said, why you got life insurance? You're self-insured, you know? You know, but uh, yeah, hey, that was a hard one, but that was another expense, you know, you had to challenge that um, and just finally got rid of it. it. Took me about six months into retirement before I finally pulled the trigger on that. <laughs> Pretty stupid, but uh, it was just an emotional thing to get through. Um, you know, not, you know, everybody wants to say that retirement is all about the numbers and all about math. And I'm telling you, I found 50% of it is what's going on mentally and emotionally as you go through this journey. Uh, fear is a big one that you need to work through. And, you know, you get things like life insurance, like what, what what's the worst that can happen? Well, you know, gosh, I, you know, I don't need it at all. If I die, my wife's going to be in great shape. Um, you know, uh, you know, this goes into four months, my, my, my four months uh, after retirement. I know, again, I said this, not even close to saying regretting uh, retirement. Uh, at the three and a half month period, three and a half months, 14 weeks, let's say, is when I felt like I transitioned from being on vacation to feeling retired. I'm not going back. Every day is Saturday. You know, you have four Saturdays and a Sunday. You know, Sunday is the day we won't go to church. So I, I was calibrated, you know, that's Sunday. Every other day is Saturday. Don't set the alarm. Uh, that's my best description of what retirement's like. But it took me three and a half months to get there. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't understand that. But for me to, to scale down my brain, to scale down my, my energy and my, you know, I was all in in my jobs, all in, you know, 24-7, 365, I was all in in my jobs. And it took me three and a half months to uh, uh, fully pass on the torch, you know, expect to be bombarded with retirement questions. That's why I wrote this document because <laughs> what's it like, what's it like, what's it like? And these are close friends and I'm just emailing them this uh this Word document saying, here, here's what went on for me, you know? Uh, and because so many people, they link their work is their identity. You know, what do you do? You know, hey, what is it you do for a living? What do you do for a living? And and people are paranoid of saying, you know, I'm retired. I love Sam and I'm retired. Uh, but um, three and a half months to feel like I was retired. You know, uh, if you retire early, like 54, expect to be bombarded with people saying, you know, gosh, there's no way I can retire can retire early. I just love my job too much. And you know, that could be true for some people. Let's just say, let's take some people and put them over the side. And that's true. What I found through deeper conversations with these individuals and saying, Hey, come on, come on. Uh, let's, let's get through this, you know, the emotional side of retiring. And what you find out is uh, the vast majority of them just aren't financially prepare, prepared and they don't want to admit failure. So you're not going to say, Hey, I'd love to retire, but I, I, I haven't prepared for it. Nobody likes saying that. You know, uh, a lot of people, their self-worth comes from their job, their pats on the back. You know, hey, you're doing a great job, great job, great. They, they need that external uh, recognition that they've done a great job. You know, uh, they have no hobbies or other second career passions to, to go after. Um, another, this is very real. I, I, this, I wouldn't have written this down except for I had so many people say it. They can't imagine spending that much time with their spouse. They're afraid of spending... 24 hours a day with their spouse. I like my my life and their life. It's good to be together, but I'm not too much. I was surprised by that. Um, and, and another group are just scared, you know, just scared. So uh, all those things could be going on for you. And if they are, they're normal. And if you want to talk about it, hey, you know, uh, check my link below. It shows how to get a hold of me, spend an hour with me. You know, uh, best advice I ever got. There was a lady named Miranda that gave me this advice. And she said, uh, take six months off uh, after retirement, take a sabbatical, don't accept any part-time jobs, any volunteer jobs, just do nothing for six months. Travel, play, have all kinds of fun, and then kind of get your head around things. Brilliant advice, because remember, I said I didn't feel like I was retired for three and a half months. So make the decision around what you want to do. If you want to work part-time, start a business, um, Whatever it happens to be, wait six months. Great advice. Thank you, Rhonda, for that. Um, you know, um, just ph phenomenal advice. Uh, you know, I retired at a great time of year. And this is another nugget for you out there. I retired in March. I think it would have been, which worked out great because there you could start a lot of outdoor things, you know, uh, walking outside, working in the yard, 
you know, starting a garden, all that kind of stuff with the, with the nicer weather, I think it would have been harder to retire in November uh, because then you're, you know, you're locked inside, especially during, you know, times of a pandemic, you know, uh, which, uh, you know, year one, I, <laughs> I retired into a pandemic. Um, great time of year. So, uh, you know, um, let's see, I'm working my way down here. Um, black controlling expenses. I talked about that. You know, setting the alarm. Here's a here's a golden. Here's what's great about retirement. And some people in retirement set their alarm every morning. Get up at six o'clock in the morning. A friend of mine gets up five thirty every morning. And uh, you know, one of my great joys of retirement is not setting an alarm. I set my alarm maybe one or two days every month, and that's if I got a consulting uh, job to go to. <laughs> But I love waking up whenever I wake up about the same time, plus or minus 20 minutes, depends on how late I stay up. But I'm pretty consistent. But it's so nice waking up on your own versus, you know, of, of an alarm clock. That What a joy. What a joy. The simple things in life, right? You know, and one of the things in, inside of, you know, about four or five months into retirement, uh, I decided I really missed coaching and developing people. And that turned into my YouTube channel. I started that in July of the year I retired. And um, I started uh, some light, very light consulting, uh, but also talk with people regularly. Every week I'm talking to somebody, coaching, mentoring, developing, and that's, that really is a passion of mine. Uh, make a little bit of money doing it, uh, but you know, I invest a lot of time into everyone that calls me in pre-work and then you know, just uh, you know, in that hour, uh, maybe even some post-work and follow-up emails. Um, but um, I do enjoy that. I found that out on my sabbat six months sabbatical that I really enjoy doing that. Doing that. So uh, anyway, hey, last thing on the funny thing, on the funny front, uh, I actually hurt my ankle during retirement. About uh, I would say five months into retirement, I went to get some orthopedic assistance. Uh, going to doctors, getting x-ray on my ankle. My ankle was just hurting. You know, probably a level four out of out of one to ten. Wasn't killing me or anything, um, but uh, the, the, I'll cut to the end. The the reason my ankle hurt is I do have flat feet, uh, but uh, I was spending so much of my time in uh, barefooted and wearing flip flops, <laughs> the little sandals on your feet. That, you know, I'm just living the retirement life on the beach and vacationing and lounging around the house. I wasn't wearing shoes, so uh, the remedy was, hey Joe, start buy a pair of shoes and wear them inside. You know. <laughs> What a problem to have during retirement that you're not wearing your shoes too much, uh, not wearing your shoes enough, not getting that support. Uh, so that, that kind of shows you a little bit of my lifestyle. But hey, the, that's the first four to five months of retirement. Um, you know, and I, I'll, I'll decide yeah, maybe based on some comments here, whether I've got another, you know, uh, let's see, I've got another two pages of, uh, of lessons learned here starting at month six. But uh, that's the first six months of retirement. The, the you know first few weeks going into retirement, the day of retirement, and then the first uh, you know four or five months of retirement. What was going on for me? If this helped you out, give me a, give me a like, uh, give me some comments. Uh, you know what retirement was like for you, or anything else you'd like to leave in a video. Let's chill out.